Hello everybody, this is Brian Garvin from Oceanside, California, and today we're going to talk about inheritance planning and leaving your crypto to your heirs. So basically, if, if you die, you want to leave your crypto to your closest family member um, and how to do this in the most seamless way possible and to take as much complication out of it as you possibly can. Um, when the price of Bitcoin and altcoins go through the roof and your stack becomes, you know, could be in the mid five figures, or six figures, or even seven figures, or even higher possibly, um, you're going to, you, you don't want to deprive your, your closest loved ones of those assets when you pass away. So we're going to talk about a couple tips to make the process easier. I know this isn't the sexiest subject in the world because there's nothing, nothing sexy about dying. But it's a part of life, you know. I'm gonna die someday. We're all gonna die someday, and um, you know, when you're when you're on Earth, you want to make the best decisions you can for your family, even if you know you're gonna pass away, because you know they might have 30, 40 more years to live. In some cases, if it's your daughter or whatever, or your son. So, so let's go over that. Um, it, you need to have a plan to transfer this in the most efficient manner. Um, these are implications around crypto and death I'd like to discuss. Once again, this, I want to say that this isn't legal or financial advice. Um, these are just tips that'll get your brain going and, and, and maybe put you in the right direction. Um, in fact, I actually suggest that you talk to an attorney before you die and get the pa your paperwork right. So if stuff has to go through probate, then you have a leg to stand on in court. So anyway, there, there's actually two ways your death can happen. It could be a slow death or it could be a fast death. Um, if you have a slow death, have a plan so you can transfer your crypto assets um, in case of a, a pending death. For example, if you if you know you're going to die of cancer or maybe you're just you have the onset of dementia and you know in six months you might not have any memory left. You know you might and and you want to make sure that the assets are transferred you know as quick as possible so you, you don't have to deal with probate um, so like if you have a fast death say for example you're driving down the road you go through and some other guy coming the other way goes through the stop sign and kills you and, and he's he it was a DUI and, and you're the victim you want to make sure that they the people your loved ones already have everything in place so they can get your assets and and so that's what so that's what you call a plan b and i'm going to get to this right now the most important thing you can do while you're still around and while you're still healthy is, is make sure your family is educated on crypto this is a crypto world our kids our grandkids we're all going to drop adopt crypto um, especially the millennials and gen zers they're going to have 20 to 40 years that they're gonna be dependent on income from somewhere. And crypto is like gonna be the best way in the world to supplement that income for them because it's the newest asset class and, and it's booming. And it's not just gonna boom for five or 10 years, it's probably gonna boom for 40 years. Even 20 years down the road, it's gonna be like a high interest savings account. So you definitely wanna make sure they get that because um, it's gonna be the most important financial thing in their lives more than likely. Um, so you want to you want to teach them the value of Bitcoin and other cryptos. You want to make sure that everyone in your family, at least the way things are going right now, that they have an account on Coinbase. Um, it only takes to get through the KYC process and all the little hoops they put you through, maybe a couple hours. Um, so you want to make sure that I have videos that explain all that. If you go to luckyinvestor.com, you'll notice that I have a crypto class that I offer on that page, and I suggest that they take a look at, at that if they're stuck and they don't know how to open up an account on Coinbase. I spent seven weeks creating that page to make sure that it pretty much covers everything. So send them there, um, it, it, make sure they all have an account. You should have an account now, even if you're not gonna use it, these exchanges give you credit for time. So what I would do is, is just, just put like 10 bucks in Bitcoin and, 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 and that way there's assets in it and they're not gonna shut it down. I don't think they'll shut it down anyway, but just to make sure put about 10 bucks of Bitcoin um, and just hold it. If they don't want to invest right now, they should invest, but if they don't, that's the least you can do. Um, you, you want to teach them about dollar cost averaging. You want to teach them 
teach them to get involved in, in the space now so when you transfer their assets they're you know they kind of know what's going on they're not totally clueless um, and, and and you know you want to teach them how to stack Bitcoin and other cryptos you want to DCA is a concept um, called dollar cost averaging like I just said and you can do it daily weekly bi-weekly monthly or even yearly but have them contribute to the space because it's a responsible thing to do and they, they tend to make you know they, they tend, they're going to tend to make profit in the meantime um, what I do is use Coinbase as kind of like my checking and savings account type thing. Um, I don't use the Coinbase card anymore. I used to, but I had problems with a ticket on that. And um, but I still use them as as you know for building my crypto business. So that's what I would suggest. Make sure everyone in your family over eighteen, because if you're under eighteen, you can't sign up for Coinbase. But if they're under eighteen, manage your assets for them. And um, if, if you're going to pass away, try to find someone over 18 to give your assets to, like like your wife, for example. If you don't have a wife, give it to an adult daughter or sister or split it up between them. I mean, that's totally up to you. That's a family decision. I can't get involved in that. Um, but, you know, j just because nobody under 18 is allowed to have a crypto account. Um, I know there are teenagers that are getting rich doing it, but I think at least with Coinbase, you're not supposed to do it. But if you have another method already, that's great. Um, so what I was going to tell you is, you know, you should understand, make sure your family understands certain concepts like um, what a hot wallet is, what a cold storage wallet is. Um, you know, make sure they understand how to, you know, copy and paste and store data on a USB drive. You know, like your your, your twelve uh, key, key, keyword phrases or whatever they call it, um, or in a password that you would have on a USB. Make sure they understand that and 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 how to have two USBs. Because what if something happens? What what if one gets soaked in water by accident or something? You want two USB backups at least. Um, so so you know, keep that in mind. Um, You're going to save your family by doing this and you're going to make life a whole lot easier for them. So they need to become part of the culture so they fully understand what they're receiving. That, that's basically what I said before. Make sure that they, you learn by doing in crypto. You don't really learn by reading too much. Watching videos like this gives you ideas, but you really got to get out and do it. Um, one thing to keep in mind um, is if you have someone listed in the beneficiary Make sure you have somebody listed in the beneficiary and that you have executors of your estate. Um, it could be a living trust, it could be a will, or it could be a power of attorney. Think of those three things and make sure they're all, to talk to a trust attorney and they'll probably do everything for you. At least the, my, when my mom passed away, we went to a trust attorney and he made sure everything was filled out properly for $500. So it's a little bit of an expense, but you know, it's it's it might make things, flow a lot smoother when when you pass away um this is you definitely should see an attorney about this because you know you're out you know just trying to do this on your own without could cause you a lot of pain in the future when you're trying when your loved ones are trying to claim your assets or your account um you also just in case it does go to court you have something to stand on um one thing i want to tell you what you don't want to do is you don't want to go on craigslist and try to find some jerk off um, that'll help you transfer your assets, you know, the right way to your to you know to your loved ones. Um, what they'll do is they'll transfer assets to their account and leave you high and dry. Um, you 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 don't you can't trust a stranger with this. You the only people you should trust is a family member or an attorney. Um, so yeah, you don't want to do that. And uh, the golden rule is to never pass down an amount that is in your name. In other words, what you don't want to do is, is, is let's say John ha has a Coinbase account. He doesn't want to pass that down to Jane and just give him the login and say, oh, here you go, honey. Um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can't do that because every account has to be specific to a certain person. Everyone has to KYC with their particular info. KYC stands for know your customer. So you want to make sure that Jane has her own account or so John can transfer the assets to Jane. Once the assets are secure in Jane's account, then everything's cool. You're good to go. 
Um, so, I, 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 all right, let, let, I'm going to give another al analogy. I'm going to call the wife Sarah from now on. Um, if John's about to pass away, his wife Sarah can't take over his account. As of this time, there's no beneficiary data that they collect on any of these exchanges. Um, if the exchange finds out Sarah is using John's account, however, they will get nervous and freeze the account. And, and that's one thing you don't want to do. You don't want Sarah in there just doing transactions, acting like everything's cool. Even if she has John's number, you know, you don't want to do that. So, and the, and the one thing is if you have like a, a quick passing away, like John gets hit by a car and he doesn't have time to, you don't have time to react or anything. Sarah wants to make sure John's phone number is left open and his email address is accessible. And these are things you should do while you're alive anyway. I mean, if, if you want your loved one to get in your account, you gotta make sure that they have email access and phone access because once you lose that physical phone, you can't 2FA into your account anymore. And these exchanges are very unforgiving. They don't give you alternative, too many alternative ways to get into, into the account. So if, and the one thing you don't wanna ever do is, you know, as a beneficiary is get locked out of the account. Um, so uh, what I would recommend doing is if there is time, you know, cancer or dementia or something like that, and there's a little time left, transfer everything to, you know, the, the husband transfer everything to the wife's wallet, coin, one coin at a time. And how you do that, everyone has a receive address. That's just the way crypto is. In, in any exchange, you're going to have a received Bitcoin address, a received Ethereum address, a, a received Solana address. It's a big, long string of code. And what happens is John can send however much he wants of his assets to Sarah. That's just how crypto works. Um, but you start with a $5 transaction. Like, like, like if, you're gonna, if he has 50000 of Bitcoin, he's going to send a $5 transaction first. He's going to make sure Sarah receives it. So then he knows that. He, she's going to receive the rest. So you do a test transaction. If you really want to be careful, do a second test transaction of, of maybe $5. Make sure she receives those two and then do the third transaction where you might want to send over, say, 10000 at a time. Yeah, just to be extra safe, just to make sure if something goes wrong, you're not going to lose everything. Um, and you could do that for your smaller coins that you have two or $3,000 each. Still do the $5 test transaction, but then send the rest. Do that for every coin um, because you want to make sure that it's everything's working fine because if something's not working right and she doesn't get it, then there was a problem with that address. Um, but most of the time when you get that address on an exchange, there's a little function that says copy to keyboard. You just click a little button and it, the entire thing is, and then you can email it to them or whatever. Um, so just, just be careful about that though because that's kind of tricky. The other thing to consider too is if you have your money in cold storage, you know, because you know, it's a lot, maybe say a half a million or something, and, and you decided to cold store some of your assets, um, most of those those wallets, those like the Ledger Nano X or whatever, they come with a, or the Ledger Nano S is actually the one I was thinking about, but they come with a 12, you know, a 12 word seed phrase. And that seed phrase, like I said, should be backed up on two USB drives, not just one. And you want to make sure that you know, they had that information as well. And, and, and every six months or so, you should have your your Sarah, which is the fictitious name of a wife, or you know, want to make sure that every six months they do a test run so she she does you know she she remembers um, how to do this and maybe pull a dollar out or something just just to make sure that she kn knows the process. So when you do pass away. She has access to your account. Don't take it for granted that she's just going to remember five, six, seven, ten years later because they probably won't. If you don't do something for a long, long time, um, you know you're going to forget. I, I have one Bitcoin uh, cold stored. I bought it in 2018 for 3,600 dollars, and every six months or so, I mean, just to make sure, I because I you might have to update the wallet um, software. You might have to update there. You know, there's other software you might have to update. You just got to be very careful, and you got to make sure you do that because things happen, and, and and sometimes your wallet won't work because the software needs to be updated. So you got to stay on top of that kind of stuff. Um, so what I wanted to say is, uh, I'm I'm going to see if there's anything else I want to talk about here. 
Yeah, I think I pretty much discussed most things. Let me see. Lasted everybody in the will. Yeah, you just want to make sure all your paperwork is written by a good attorney. Any kind of physical paperwork, because that's covering you on the other end too. Because um, you just don't know. You know, um, you could put a note. You're supposed to put a notice in the paper when you're going to receive assets or whatever publicly or whatever. And 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 some crazy uh, relative could could challenge it or something. Say, hey, wait, I'm I'm. I deserve 50% of what he had or whatever and try to take it to court. So you just want to make sure that if you intend to pass it to somebody that you have it in writing because you just want to cover yourself, you know. So I guess that's about it. I think I covered everything. Um, I hope this video gives you some good information on how to process this a lot easier. Um, please sub consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking the notification bell. Um, this way you'll automatically get my videos as they come out. And, um, you know, this video is what they call a CYA video, cover your backside type of a video. And a lot of people aren't comfortable doing these because they're not sexy videos, but they're so important when it comes to just making sure you're ready if, if something like this happens. And eventually it will happen And if, if you keep crypto long enough. If you're going to pass it down from family member to family member and because crypto is, is going to appreciate so much and that's why I made this video. I just want to make sure you're covered. So on the next video, I'm going to be discuss. I might be discussing CoinLedger first um, and doing another video about that. Um, but then after that, I'm eventually going to start discussing all my altcoin plays one by one. I have, I own 12 altcoins and um, they have like the most crazy cool use cases. I mean, I really think in, the, in 2024, if I take all 12 and, and put them and get the average of, of what I think I'll get on them, I personally think I'll probably get about 50x. And the reason I say that is because some of these are probably going to 100x. Um, so I'm going to go over every one of those and you can decide if you want to get into them or not. But I'm going to go into detailed videos on why I think you know, for me, at least I'm going to get into them. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you to do it or not to do it, but at least you'll have the information. So have an incredible day and I'll be in touch soon with my next video. Thank you.